Scholars, I am Ashanti Barnes. I am the early childhood curriculum lead for our wonderful school district, Jackson Public Schools. On today, I will be sharing with you a strategy known as the phoneme graphene mapping strategy. I'm really, really excited because it helps you to spell and be able to decode and read words. So let's go ahead and move into um, some vocabulary. So if you notice, our strategy has two main um, words. We have phoneme and grapheme. So let's make sure that we can understand what those words mean before we delve into the practice. Okay, so here we have phoneme. Phoneme. Can you say phoneme? Do you hear another word inside a phoneme? That's right, phone. When you hear phone, what do you typically think about? Absolutely, sound. So this is our, our symbol or signal for sound as if we're talking on a telephone, okay? And what is a phoneme? A phoneme is the smallest unit of sound in speech. Got it? The smallest unit of sound in speech. So next we have grapheme. Grapheme, can you say grapheme with me? Grapheme. Great job. Do you hear another word inside of grapheme? Absolutely, graph. Graph. So this would be our symbol for graph, as if we're writing or a written representation of a sound. Grapheme is a letter or group of letters that represent a single phoneme. So phoneme means sound, and grapheme means to write what you heard or the sound. So let's go into our phoneme graphene mapping. I'm really, really excited about this strategy, guys. So if you would note, I have a grid here, and this is where we're going to take the sounds of the words that we hear and spell them by sounds alone, okay? So here are our directions. We are going to segment spelling words into graphemes. Remember, each phoneme is represented by one box, okay? So we're going to try. So if you notice, I have some sticky notes that will help us to identify the number of sounds or the number of phonemes before we write the letters or graphemes. So our first word is bat. Can you say bat? Great job. Now, let's think about the number of sounds we hear in the word bat. The number of phonemes, sounds we hear in the word bat. Ready? B. A. T. How many sounds or phonemes we hear in the word bat? You got it. B. We hear three sounds. So no matter how many letters it takes to write the word bat, every letter or letter combination must fit inside of the three boxes to represent three phonemes. So the first sound we heard was b. And which phoneme, or grapheme I should say, which grapheme represents that phoneme for b? Yes the letter B. The next sound or phoneme in bat was a, a. Which grapheme represents that sound or phoneme? You got it, the letter A. And finally, we have the final phoneme. T. Which grapheme represents the T? sound. Absolutely. So we have three phonemes, b, a, t. And the graphemes represented by those phonemes would be b, a, t. This is a CVC word. It's very, very simple. So now we can spell the word bat. Great job.
Great job. So our next word is fluff. Can you say the word fluff? Great job. Now, can you n count the number of phonemes you hear in the word fluff? Yes. Oh. Ah. Uh. So now we know that we have four phonemes. So no matter how many graphemes it takes, they must fit inside of four boxes to represent the four phonemes. So let's think about it. We heard the sound first. So we represent that with a letter. Great job, guys. The next sound we heard in fluff was ooh. Can you think about the sound, the grapheme that represents that sound? Absolutely. The letter L. Our next phoneme sound was uh. Yes, the letter U. It's a short U. And the final sound or phoneme we heard was f. Absolutely. That would be the letter F. Now, because we understand the floss rule, we know that fluff is spelled with two Fs at the very end. Why on earth would we place two letters or two graphemes inside of the final box? Yes, because the two Fs make only one sound, one phoneme. And we also know that FL is a consonant blend. Why didn't we have the same rule for the consonant blend? Well, with consonant blends, there are two letters that make two separate sounds. They come together to make a sound, but you can hear both distinct letters. So because we heard the F or the F and the L or the L, we have to separate them because they have their own distinct phonemes. Consonant blends must be separated into their own phoneme box. Okay? The next word we have is clash. Clash. So let's think about the sounds or the phonemes we heard in clash. K, U, A, SH. All right, so we have four phonemes for the word clash. Now, our ears heard a consonant blend. So we know that that consonant blend must be separated out into two separate phonemes. So for the first phoneme we heard was k. The second phoneme was u. So the CL is a consonant blend, but we separate them out because we clearly and distinctly hear each phoneme separately. The next phoneme is ah. You got it, the letter A. And finally, we hear sh. Yes, sh is a digraph. Now, a digraph are two letters that come together, but they make one sound. So because it is one phoneme, the two letters that come together to make that digraph must be placed in the same box. Now, which two letters make the sh digraph? Correct. S and H. So let's blend it all together. K, U, A, SH, CLASH. We've just spelled the word clash. Our next word is like. Can you say the word like? Great job. Let's count out the number of phonemes in like. O, I, So here we have three phonemes or three sounds. Okay. What was the first sound or phoneme you heard in the word like? You got it. Oh. What was the next sound or phoneme you heard in the, in the word like? I, I. Now, was that a short I or a long I? 
Yes, because long vowels say their own names. Okay. The final phoneme is k, k. What letter makes the k sound? Which grapheme should we use for the k sound? Absolutely, the letter K. Because there is a long I in like, there's something missing from this word. We know that in order to have the long I sound, there must be another letter. Do you recall what that letter is? Oh, I can't trick you. You're right. It is the silent E. Now, if we recall our directions, each phoneme is represented in one box. How do we represent a silent E? I can't trick you guys. Yes. So we're going to place the silent E in the same box with the last consonant, which was the letter K, or the grapheme K. We'll make it a little bit smaller because this E makes this I long. So let's spell like together. L-I-K-E. Like. So I'm so glad that you joined us on today to learn about the phoneme grapheme mapping strategy. I hope that you will take the, the concepts to learn how to spell more accurately and to be able to decode words and come to words where you are, are, have approached a word for the very first time and you can take these concepts to break it down and spell it accurately. The phoneme grapheme mapping strategy will have you become a spelling superstar. I can't wait to see you at the Spelling Bee.